Hi, everyone. So today I'm going to cover quickly how to do some clinical survival curves. So let's get right to it. This is a data set right here with patients, as you can tell right here, anonymously ID'd alongside a ton of clinical factors such as, you know, what their disease is, what their IPI is. This is kind of a clinical staging factor. Are they over 60? Things like that. Then you get into some genetic classifications of lymphoma, and these are a little more field specific. We can worry about those if your project kind of covers that, but not as much to focus today. So what we want to focus on, if you ever want to do a survival curve, you have to look for two things. One is the event-free survival. This is how many months in this case, a single patient, as you can see, each patient has their own value, how many months that patient had on therapy without having a relapse, refraction, an adverse event, basically anything bad happened. So this is our best measure of how long did somebody last on this typical therapy. We can use this by measuring these values against these values as EFS for status right here. If there's a one here, it means that an event did occur within this amount of time right here. So each of these two values is paired up. So right here, we see that somebody has lasted 74 months and they have had not yet had an event. That means these people are actually still ongoing in this case, at least whenever this data was last measured. Somebody like this though, 78 months, but at that 78th month mark, they did have an event in that case. This is the basic metric that we can use to create those Kaplan-Meier survival curves, which are probably the biggest thing that we will use um, you know, in clinical biology. So we wanna pair this up with something different. You can make survival curves based on clinical stuff. Pretty much everybody has already done that though. So mainly what we do is make it off genes. So in this case, I'm actually going to focus on this gene, CDK2NA. This is a tumor suppressor that when it's deleted or mutated, things are bad. So we're going to use this as something called a sanity check where I am going to sort based on this value over here. I'm just going to find it over here, largest to smallest. There we go. So now I have people with a one that signifies that you have this deletion of CDK2NA. So I wanna measure the survival of people that have this versus zeros down here, these patients that do not have it. So how do we do that? Let's take a look here. So keeping this in mind over here and you can move Excel sheets to like make this a little easier and there are other ways to automate this but I am showing you kind of the raw like brute force way to do this. So keeping over here to the right, and I see like who has CDKN 2A and who doesn't. I'm just gonna scroll down here and kind of match up everybody that has it. There's quite a few people actually. Okay, right there. So here's all the patients that I've got right here and all their months and events or lack of events that have this alteration. So if I copy that, I'm gonna take it into GraphPed Prism. So first thing Prism is going to ask is what kind of data do I want to do? You can do XYs, columns, you know, like all the basic stuff. Survival is a specialized type of curve. And we're going to want to import our own data and create here. Okay, so in this first one, we have a set of patients right here. And we're gonna, we can label these that, you know, these are our patients that we are looking at that do have this alteration in this case. So the X is always going to contain the number of months. And the Y is gonna be specific only to, it's gonna be zeros or ones, and it's only going to be for this group right here, these Ys, because remember, these are only the people that have the CDKN2A mutation or deletion. So if I go over here instead, I'm going to go down here back to our data because now I need all the people that do not have this alteration because I have to compare their survival with the same disease, just not without, you know, just without this mutation. In this case, I'm going to start right here. I'm going to get all their months. Okay. So their months still go in the x axis, it's the same x axis for them. Okay. The difference is that. If you go back up, I know that I'm just like regular person scrolling here. Sorry. Okay. Back up here. This is just, there are faster ways to do this, but I just wanted to show you every step. Okay. Instead of posting to this Y column, 
We have a new group, remember. These are wild type patients in this case. And you can, you can label and do the numbering later. You don't have to do that right now. Now I have two groups, okay? Everybody is on the same time scale, but one group is being assessed if they have events and these group only have this alteration and this group is being assessed for their events, but they do not have the alteration, okay? So you can go to data and I like putting these little error bars here, this 95% uh, confidence interval, it's pretty, it's pretty helpful. Usually whenever I'm looking at a, an alteration that you kind of expect to not be that great, I usually just put it in red. That's the typical, typical thing. So you can see that the CDK2NA or N2A, sorry, I've been saying it wrong. I always do that. Um, they have a pretty steep drop right here. And these, this is over months right here. Um, you can leave this. I usually like to change it to, uh, let's see, major ticks are at 24. I usually like to like put something like that. Because this is this is more of like a year by year basis, and twenty four is good because that's our EFS twenty four. So in EFS twenty four, if you have this alteration, you're only at about forty five percent chance of making it two years. Versus if you don't have this alteration, you're closer to like you know sixty five seventy percent. So looking at the p value right here, this is the the test that we're running here, the log rank test. This is the one you're always going to want to check. This p value basically signifies okay, what we've got here only had a 0 0.0083 chance of happening by random. Thus, it's likely not random. It's likely that CDK N2A is bad for patients. That's the beginning of combining clinical and DNA alterations.